A dodgy boat trailer has ruined many a good day. Not only are there safety concerns when you're towing your pride and joy down the road, but who wants to be the one stuck at the side of the road with a broken trailer while your mates are all out enjoying the water? Thankfully, there is something you can do to avoid all this. It's called preventative maintenance. Boat trailers live a hard life carting around a heavy vessel up and down the road before being dipped into a bath of salt water. And you need to know, no matter how new your trailer is, or how much you look after it, eventually things will fail. It's just part of boating. Depends how much people care they give to them, I suppose, but you can always tell one that's been looked after a bit better than the other, but eventually that gets them in the end, even when they are looked after, but you can sort of prolong that with a bit of good maintenance. Preventative maintenance is more than just a hose off after a day on the water. There's several things you need to check over to ensure you're not the one stuck on the side of the road. People don't give enough thought to their trailers. There's not a lot that can go wrong, but enough to ruin your day out on the water for sure. A harsh environments, gravel roads, bitumen roads. Look, you've got to look after your couplings, your straps, your bearings, your brakes. You know, they're the main, the main ones you've got to look after. So we encourage everybody to do a little bit of trailer maintenance each time before they go away on their boat. Failed wheel bearings have been the cause of many a frustrating start or end to a day's boating. But these are one part of the trailer which can easily be checked at home. So generally before we go anywhere, we can just do a quick check to make sure they're not about to fail straight away and we can just jack it up and just roll it around and it's rolling fairly freely and no rumbling noises or anything like that so we can assume we might be alright to just do our trip. However, if the wheel makes a noise or doesn't spin as freely as it should or seems a little loose or wobbly, then it's time to dig a little deeper. It's not running smoothly, we need to take the wheel off. Right, so this is just the hub, so to get it, the bearings need to remove them. Remove the grease cap off it, and it'll have a whole heap of grease on it, which is good. And we can sort of see there that the grease is pretty well the same colour as it was when it was put together, so it hasn't had any, any contamination in it. To take it off, we've got to sort of remove the split pin out of it with a pair of side cutters or something like that, and undo the nut. And then we take them out, and we can see this, has got a, this one's actually got a two-piece seal in it. There's some that run on the shaft and some that run in on themselves. So it's a good idea to know whether you actually got holding bearings or forward bearings or a combination of both, or for bigger trails, bigger sort of Land Cruiser type bearings. Well, then you know what ones to carry for spare. If we think we might have a problem with the bearings, we can usually take it out and give it a wipe. And as you can see in there, the surface of the bearing looks nice and shiny and, and freshly ground, like it should do. If it's, if it's corroded or anything, it'll be discoloured and probably have little pits in it. And the worst one is probably the back one. You've got to do the same with the back bearing, because that's probably the first place the, bear, the water gets into. And it's a matter of just knocking those shells out with a pin punch and pressing new cups in them and repacking it with grease and away you go again. It's much easier to do this at home before the bearing fails altogether. It's also a good idea to carry a kit in the car with all the bits and pieces you'll need should the worst happen. You can even purchase hubs ready to go, which makes the job even easier. Your boat trailer has cables, plugs, sockets, wires, lights and some even have electric brakes and none of these things are any good at dealing with salt water. The thing to look out for is the colour green. This is the perfect example of a corroded electrical plug that hasn't had much love at all. So generally we can brush all these down with a little wire brush and spray them with a bit of CRC and keep that on them might help with the contact and keeping all the lights working. Another good idea is to inspect your boat trailer while your boat is in the water. So at the boat ramp, things like rollers and skids can actually damage your boat, which is not good if they are not up to scratch. 
It's also a good time to check the bones of the trailer, make sure its frame is structurally sound and not rusted. Sometimes they're beyond repair, like they can have all the running gear and can be up to fine, but the, the trailer frame itself can be past its use by date and can have rust in it or rust holes in it or cracks in it that's beyond repair. If your trailer is structurally sound, everything else is replaceable. So another thing we should check too is the condition of our springs. Most of the modern trailers have a galvanised spring like this in it, so they're not as susceptible to rusting between the leaves, but they still do suffer sometimes from cracks in them or something like that. And also, where they slide in and out of this hanger at the back is a wear point on them, and it's sort of got to be uh, a regular thing just to look at it and make sure it hasn't worn through. Other parts of your boat trailer which need a bit of TLC include greasing your jockey wheel, checking your winch cable and make sure you have suitable straps to secure the boat to the trailer.